That's what I'm gonna focus on. We get it, we get it. I'm Andrew Stack, and I'm a war correspondent. Holy shit. In 1999, I was in Indonesia when the country was on the brink of civil war. That month of living dangerously. We had to make a decision. Go east to cover the fighting, or go west to skip the entire mess and carry on with some adventures. Oh man, it's gonna be a tough one. We chose Sumatra. To recap, we just got out of Bukit Luang's Bahurok River, ahead of a massive storm. It's as if a giant million-gallon bucket is being dumped directly on our heads. Within three minutes, visibility goes out the window. I've been in lots of storms, but this holds the record. I'm astonished by the rate and volume of rain. Monsoon season is just starting. There's no point in drying off from the river now. Holy hell, that looks like a lot of water. Awesome. We're not going anywhere. Paul ducked out of the rain into a tribal shop down the trail. And how about this wall over here once? He's shopping by lantern. Locals are rushing to complete a roof they thought they had all day to finish. Rivers start emerging up and down the valley where none had existed before. We've been told the Bahorok River carves out a new course every few years. It's easy to see how. See the big tree in the center of this shot? This video was shot yesterday. And here's that big tree now. There's a home beneath it. The family inside got out just in time. The village is banding together. It's obvious this isn't the first time. It's an assembly line process. Piece by piece, the tree rapidly disappears. Indonesia is one of the prettiest countries I've ever seen. In fact, it's on my top three must-sees on the planet. But by far, it experiences some of the worst acts of God. In this case, it's a landslide, but more often it's earthquakes, tsunamis, and sometimes volcanic eruptions. Paul and I are used to seeing calamities when we're working, but it's the last thing we thought we'd be shooting while we were here. When I pulled him out of the shop, he reacted by saying, what? Spot news here? Seriously? That's exactly what I thought. We just went from fun and games to near fatalities in the space of 30 minutes. We knew the history of this river valley, but weren't expecting to witness it firsthand. Hey, you're making it through. Ellie's last stop was to pick up medicine for the orangutans. Debris is blocking her from getting back to the orangs. Everyone in the village uses this footpath, so getting it reopened is a priority. You know the saying, it takes a village? Well, here it is in action. One more push and...
the trail is reopened. Now that Paul and I have been shocked back into reality, we duck back into the tribal shop to conclude Paul's business. Wow, this is totally cool. The lack of power makes it a surreal trip back in time. Making deals in the dark. The shopkeeper takes us into a back room filled with hundreds of tribal masks. Spanning not just time, but distance, Indonesia is thousands of miles wide. He pulls out something Paul's not expecting. Got any superstitions? Uh, what is that? Uh, this is for the bad spirit. It wards off bad spirit. Yeah. He looks like a bad spirit. Paul's hooked. He's already got the mask from Neos, but other pieces here have him salivating. How about bow and arrow and the duck? Bow and arrow and the duck. 346 if I divided by 7,800. 7, 8. $44, throwing a free mask. $50, make it all happen. The collector said of Ginsu knives. Here's Paul's main purchase. Press a little bit with filling. Don't pause. Okay. It's gotta be handled with kid gloves, and even though Paul only wants it for display, it still works. Ready? Thank you for your instruction. You will start with The power's back on. Nice, we're back. Now we can see who okay. we've been dealing with. Johnson. Yeah. Mr. Johnson? Yeah. Very nice to meet you. Very nice too to meet you. Thanks. He says his name is Mr. Johnson. That's your real name. Yeah, that's my name. You like to no, see my No, I don't my... believe it. Yeah. Oh, shit. Making deals with Mr. Johnson. Of course, there's no accounting for pronunciation. That's my word. It's me, yeah. This is my identity card. You see that? Johnson. Yeah, it's Here's me. Johnson. Here. See? Ah, Jansen. Jansen. Jansen, what's your Jansen. first name? Jansen. What's your last name? Pangavian. Pangavian. Wow, that's insane. <laughs> okay, Johnson. The arrows, yeah? Yeah. Johnson disassembles the bow and arrow set so Paul won't break it traveling. We're heading back to the States in a couple of days, so there's okay. little chance this set will get broken. This is the right direction. 15 pieces. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Our last night in Bukit Luang, we're spending it in a natural acoustic phenomenon. The acoustic cave is known around Sumatra as a place you have to experience. Plus, it's super cool to get into. Climb a few steps from the village center and turn left into a hole in the rocks. At first, it's like any other cave, but then we faintly hear sounds of music. Turn another corner and wow. Locals love this spot. The acoustics really do live up to the reputation. Sound is coming at us from all sides but we really notice it bouncing off the ceiling. Each hip word or phrase carries with it an implication of the speaker's background and his involvement in hip society. Back in Medan, we return to Nettie and Marina's capable hands. Okay, <laughs> I, I want you to see like this. Nettie's arranged a tour of the Great Mosque. It'll be our last stop before heading home. <laughs> the sincerity and generosity of Indonesians is not to be underrated. We never met Nettie before the bus yard, and here she is being our personal guide. No shoes or shorts are allowed inside. <laughs> no shorts. This is my first time inside a mosque. <laughs> Nettie and Marina lead us through each passageway, pointing out ornate calligraphy covering nearly every inch inside. This the total amount of what I don't know is unnerving. I'm aware of my ignorance and doing my best to remedy it. 
Outside, the blending of cultures blurs as Marina shows us her knockoff jeans. A near perfect copy of Levi's, except, are those Princess Leia jeans? Throughout our trip, we've been repeatedly offered cigarettes. No smoke. No smoke. Paul doesn't want to seem ungrateful, but he doesn't smoke. The moment we arrived on Batam, cigarette ads greeted us. Pretty nice here. Yeah? Everywhere we've gone, we couldn't complain about hospitality. Thanks. You like? Hello. No, nah, what's that, cigarette? No. Nah, I don't smoke. Oh, no. I don't smoke. It smells like marijuana. No, 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 no. It's OK. It's OK. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. It's hard to imagine a happy ending with so much smoking. It's a huge public health concern for Indonesia, as if they don't have enough problems. To begin with, virtually all men in Sumatra smoke. A small minority may not smoke, but this causes them to literally not be considered men. Advertising has a lot to do with this, there are no rules governing cigarette ads, so self-doubts about machismo are exploited. It took Paul and I a few days to realize I don't smoke. men who don't smoke are thought to be gay. Seriously. I don't smoke. I don't smoke. That means we're gay. No matter where you stand on political correctness or homophobia, that's a lot of pressure pushing boys to cave in and light up. You like smoke, uh, you know what I'm oh, no, I don't smoke. They're bad for you. In Indonesia, do all men smoke? Real men. Huh? Real men smoke. Real men. Real men smoke. Real men. Do you understand? Yes. These kids from the mountains east of Bukatinggi can barely speak English. Speak English? Yeah. Little. But they have a slight idea what we're asking. Yeah, tell me about the cigarettes. Every, every man in, in Indonesia smokes cigarettes. Why? Because, because smoking is very nice. Because it's not nice? Huh? You, what, you smoke because it's not nice or you smoke because it's cool? <laughs> is it true that in Indonesia, if you don't smoke and you're a man, then you're gay? So if I don't smoke, are Paul and I lovers? Oh. Yeah. Smoking is a rite of passage for Indonesian boys. Smoking among men here is the highest in the world. And it's estimated more boys smoke than anywhere else, too. Some females smoke, but the marketing is directly focused on that constant underlying male message. You're not a man if you don't smoke. Now he's positive we're gay. Advertising both created the message and plays off it in a feedback loop with many themes. Remember the locals repairing the roof? Clearly, they assumed I was manly. The ads represent all things these side hack drivers are not but likely wish they were. Carefree Westerners enjoying the good life. People here didn't realize they were missing out until they were told how things could be. Envy is a powerful tool, especially when combined with fears of inadequacy. Oh wait, that's the same method used on us. In outlying industrial towns like Pekinbaru, shops are sponsored by cigarette brands you've likely never heard of. Taste of freedom, Kansas. <laughs> Do Indonesians smoke these and say we're not in Sumatra anymore? Philip Morris dominates the Indonesian market by carefully crafting these brands to have a Western feel. And cigarettes are extremely cheap here, well within reach of even the poorest kids. Not surprisingly, the death toll created by all this smoking touches everyone. It's high enough even we know one of the victims. Bottom line, boys think if they want to be a man, they have to smoke. Hard to believe anyone would believe this message, but they don't have generations of exposure to tell them this is a manipulation. It's a tragic irony reinforced more here than anywhere else at any time. With Western markets shrinking, cigarette giants are taking advantage of this plentiful market while they still can. It's not surprising kids are at the top of their prospective customer list. We're gonna grab a taxi. Tell me that you'll wait for me. You know that one. Come on, everybody. Let's go. 
I like to think life is a series of classes we signed up for in advance. Oh, babe, I hate to go. You can never quite recapture the feeling of what it's like to experience the wide world for the first time. But it sure is fun trying. Sumatra is the most fun I've ever had. It's a natural amusement park where anything goes. But keep in mind, these adventures are literally at your own risk. You may think you have insurance, but it's been my experience, control is only an illusion. About a half an hour ago, the gunfire started here. Combat operations are winding down in East Timor, but it'll be three years before Timor is actually recognized as an independent nation. I hope you enjoyed this chapter as much as Paul and I did. Now I am protected by the surf guy. As much fun as all of that was, there's one great thing about being back in the first world. Yeah. Yeah. Did that work? You know what, I can't address the taxi driver because we never told you about that part of the story. But you're looking at me through a camera that we almost lost. What's your name? Dan. Dan. Uh, 20 bucks for you, man. Thank you very much. You brought our camera back to us. Thank you. Thank you. Who are you calling a dummy? With a razor blade? Yeah. Cut my pack open and all the yeah. stuff dumps out. Not, not all the stuff. They know where is your money. Yeah. I never keep my money there. No, but... Uh, <laughs>